Welcome to the Coco Vid Vid Show. My name is Cody, and I will be your host today. As no surprise to anybody who knows who I am, we're going to start today in the software development industry. I'm here with Kyle Schmitz. He has over 12 years experience working in software development, and that includes working at ComIT as a teacher, uh, working as a scrum master at Ubisoft, and he currently works at D2L as a software development manager. Kyle, thanks for joining me today. Yeah, not a problem. Glad to help out. So uh, I think we could get started with first going over what it is D2L does, if you don't mind, and what your role as a software development manager at the company entails. D2L actually specializes in education software, which, uh, as we can tell, is extremely important in today's day and age with what with the pandemic going on. Um, they have their main um, suite, which is called Brightspace. Um, the one that I actually work on with my team is called Portfolio. Um, so it's a, it's a really interesting uh, application that my team works on, along with another tool called Brightspace for Parents. Um, hmm. which is a parent portal to allow them to see what their um, their kids uh, have been doing in school and how well they've been doing feedback they've received from teachers, that sort of thing. Um, so my job is to kind of vouch for the technical side of the application. Do you, can you speak a little bit more about who, what kind of schools are using your software? There's actually three main categories of clients that we have. The first one would be K-12. to um, the second one would be university. And then the third one is actually corporate. Um, so a lot of hmm. different corporate uh, businesses will need some sort of education platform that they could have courses on that their employees can take. You know, when you look at a learner, that's less, let's say, especially in the younger side of things sure. in the, you know, K to six kind of range, their needs are extremely different than higher ed needs. So through D2L's suite in Brightspace, you know, what tools are important and how those tools are used varies widely depending on the intended audience if it's higher education or k-12 for sure speaking of changing needs and circumstances and, and different teaching styles teachers are having to learn uh new ways of reaching their students how has that new climate impacted so some software such as brightspace or por portfolio that d2l provides uh, it's, it's impacted us in a lot of ways. Um, when, well, for context, when I started at D2L back in March, that was, um, I actually had three full days in the office before they said, okay, we're shutting everything down now. Everyone has to, to work from home just for some context. So um, at the same time, schools were going through the same thing. You know, they were mm -hmm. starting to close down schools. And so what that did was it basically took our usage and it just shot through the roof. And it also even turned some use cases that we had that were quite well established and kind of turned them on their head. Hmm. Um, for instance, for portfolio, our most common use case in the K-12 to space was actually in-class usage. So the idea is that the instructor, the teacher, has their own iPad and they're handing it to students and the students are using it. Well... All of a sudden, what we had was everyone was learning from home. So now, instead of having a teacher that is very familiar with the software is walking you through it, mm -hmm. you have a parent. And right. the parent isn't necessarily familiar with our software. And so one of the first things that we had to do as soon as I started was we had to release new functionality to make it easier for parents to help their kids do the same thing that they were already doing in class. Um, and we are continuing to see that where we do have a lot of schools that have, you know, They've opened up again, kids are learning in class, but a lot of um, different institutions are preparing or are already prepared for the fact that they might have to switch back to remote learning, which means we have more people onboarding with our software. We have more functionality that we're trying to get the door to make that transition smoother. It, has, um, it, has it been like a noticeably larger like spike than previous years? Noticeable I know you been is at... an understatement. <laughs> um, I, won't, I won't be able to give uh, specifics, but we've seen um, an order of magnitude wow. higher usage. Let's switch a little bit into just kind of working in the work environment in general. Is everybody in the company fully remote right now? So D2L maintains several different offices. Um, for our Winnipeg office right now, everyone is working fully remote. Um, and they've been pretty much fully remote the entirety of my employment there. Um, and we're really making sure that everyone's equipped to be remote for the long term. We're really not uh, assuming that there's going to be you know, um, any sort of change to how things have been going for quite a while. Um, so everyone's kind of like you know, hunkering down for the long haul at this point. Sure. And how much experience in the past have you had with remote working? And Barely any at all. So like a lot of the companies <laughs> I work for, and this is so funny to me, um, 
have been like, we can't work from home. How could we possibly work from home? You need to be in the office. This, all my jobs have always been in the office, you know, the whole nine to five kind of thing. So this is my first experience being, it's like thrown into the deep end, like just sure. like fully remote um, all the time. Yeah. How's that adjustment been? Like, I think there's in, in this industry, there are people who have uh, worked a lot fully remotely for a big parts of their career. They've uh, software development is one industry that can be well uh, suited for that. And we've had people who work purely as contractors and work out of their home offices. Um, but then there's people like you and me uh, who have worked our entire careers based going into offices meeting different software developers or meeting different people fraught within the industry. It's almost a different personality of a person that can work from home uh, as a contractor versus somebody that goes in the office. So has it been an adjustment for you and how has it been for your team? And Yeah. And it's, it really depends on who you ask. It's funny that you say it takes a certain kind of person to like fully work uh, remote. And so it depends on who you talk to. Like for some people I talk to on the team, they're just like, I love this. I have so much more time in the day. I don't have a commute. Mm. Um, I have everything I need here. Why would I need to be in the office? And I find that uh, it's been really uh, a challenge working from home to have that kind of mental separation, you know, mm. even though I have a separate office in the basement. And so I, I prefer being in the office where I can. I, I fully understand that we, like I fully understand and support that we need to be remote at this point. But I'll admit that, if uh, this pandemic was over tomorrow and you're like, do you want to go back to the office? I'd actually be one of the first people to be like, yep, yeah, I'd like to go back. I'd like to get that that separation of like physical space. Mm -hmm. um, I just find that that's uh, an environment that I work better under. I, I, I think a lot about that, uh, uh, about work environments in an office and just like you mentioned, just going in the, the act of walking into an office, saying hi to people. You have all these quick uh, I, I like to call them just like these collisions. Sometimes I feel like a lot of actual work and productivity can happen in those conversations. I feel like th that is something, that is a big thing that we are probably losing. Uh, is that something that you've, you've noticed too? Like Oh, for sure. And I mean, like, especially in the kind of role that I have as a software development manager, mm -hmm. you know, relationships are key. Mm -hmm. Part of that I find is having those kinds of connections where, you know, you're, you're in with the mix, like, like both in the work and, and physically, to be honest, like you're, you're sitting with everyone else on the team. You're having those kinds of conversations. There's nothing stopping you from, you know, sending someone a message on Slack or, or having a Zoom call, but it's an event now. There's an so, expectation that if you're starting a Zoom call with me, there's a purpose. <laughs> it's a very deliberate action. It doesn't have I had to create kind of the entire like... concept of this show so I could talk to people again. That's... <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, there's just... <laughs> Can I call you? Why? <laughs> like, uh, I'm doing, I'm, uh, I'm doing an interview for a TV yeah. Uh, for a show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and so I find that uh, you don't get that same level of connection, that same level of just being, you know, part of the team and part of the group because you yeah. don't have those, like you said, those, those collisions, those little conversations that happen that are really what I find build that connection very slowly over time. It's, it's hard been... to know if like that guy is the guy who just swears at himself at the keyboard. Like you, you would hear that in an office. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if they're real. They could all be fake. We could have just gotten really good at having like stock footage. And it's one guy know, and an amazing deep fake algorithm. <laughs> just collecting like five paychecks. <laughs> a lot of the companies I've worked for, culture has been very important. Uh, at least in my mind, I'm also very conscious of culture with the teams I, I've, I've led and I've managed. How, have you had to try any new strategies with uh, this this environment with through Slack? We've tried a couple of things. Um, one of them is we have a, a reoccurring meeting every day at 11 o'clock. We call it coffee break. Um, we also have another one that happens on Fridays where we, you know, at the end of the day, we kind of clock out and play some games, things like Jackbox and stuff like that. But in terms of like, you know, has it been successful? Um, it's hit and miss, you know, it started off really strong, but I find that it's usually the first thing to go on people's calendars. You know, we've we've tried to mix it up a couple of times. Um, another one that we did, which was actually really great, was we did a an offsite, you know, where typically in normal times, you'd, you know, book a, a conference kind of area, usually through like a hotel or something like that. And you do like a whole day thing and go for lunch and et cetera. Everyone ordered skip. And we all had lunch anyways, <laughs> even though it was all skipped separately. And that, that was you really great. You purposely messed up orders. So some guy got your order and you just... Yeah. Yeah, it, it was pretty good. So we've, we've tried to mix it up a few times. Um, but once again, you know, it's uh, it's not the same, you know. 
you know, it's, it's very easy to, um, hide when you're working remotely. It's true for all of us though, right? Like the, the something about the world as it is now, it, as uh, the circumstances as it is now allows us to be the worst of ourselves, uh, <laughs> and the best of ourselves sometimes, but we can, it's, we can sink, we can fall back into bad habits. We can fall back into the shadows. We can, uh, hide if we want to hide. But on that note, has, has there anything been anything about this new work normal that you feel like has actually been a positive? Have you, have you compared to previous places you have worked before? I mean, one of the, the less obvious ones that even from myself and some other people that I've talked to is if people are able to invest some of the gained time that they have back into like their mm. home life and their family. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for myself, um, I have, uh, you know, almost a two year old now and I would miss you know breakfasts in the morning as well as dinner in the evening so i miss all of that on the front end and the tail end you know there'd be days where i'd come home and i would be like you know texting my wife and be like you know please keep her up just like five more minutes i'm almost home so i would get to see her because she'd yeah. be yawning and kind of cranky because she's tired and she has to get put to bed where now i actually i I get to see her in the morning and in the afternoon. Like I, I actually do breakfast, lunch, and dinner with her, you know, cause yeah. I'm working in the house. I could come upstairs and have lunch with you guys. Um, and I've heard a lot of other people share the same kind of mindset that they're able to either like, if it's like projects at home, things like that. Um, um, I do find that like some people I chat to, to be totally fair, um, have said like this works really well for them. You know, they, they have their setup exactly as they need. There's no distractions. They actually prefer not to have those side conversations going on where they feel the need to like listen in in case mm. it affects them. So they do prefer working from home. So, you know, it depends on the person, of course. I, I, I want, I wonder a lot about how permanent a lot of this stuff is, right? What do you see sticking around? What do you hope gets better? Um, do you, what do you see going back to normal? What do you see never, never going back to normal? I doubt that we'll see a huge influx of companies going 100% remote. I think we're going to see a lot more choice though. I've had a lot of companies, companies that I've worked for that maintained that it was impossible to work remote. You know, mm -hmm. we need to have you in the office. This is where people get better work done. Companies are going to realize that there's really no concrete barrier preventing you from allowing your employees to work remote. Right. You know, so we're going to see a lot of companies giving that choice, I feel. Um, I also think that we're going to see more discussion on mental health. We have to be very aware that people may be struggling with things. They may be suffering in ways, um, you know, some people thrive working from home. Other people are in the same house that they live in is now the house that they work in staring at the same walls not having those social connections, mm -hmm. we're going to have to be aware of that people may be struggling in different ways that now are even less visible because we're not seeing them in the office. And we're really, at least I hope that we're going to be really cognizant of, of that. Um, mm. But I do hope that uh, we have companies that are more accommodating to the fact that like people might need to, to take a break. Like I don't think as a species, we're built to sit at a desk for eight hours and be productive from this scheduled time to that scheduled time. That's not how our brains operate. I really don't think so. I hope that we see companies that are willing to accommodate for when people are most productive. I hope to see that as well. I'm hoping um, that we'll see a lot more focus on people. Yeah. Like you said, uh, being able to take the time on their mental health, being able to take the time on spending time with their family. I'm hoping that that's something we get out of this and something that we come out of this uh, feeling a little bit better about. So thanks a lot, Kyle, for, uh, for your time. Thanks for joining me today on my inaugural episode of the Coco Vintage Show. Uh, for sure, yeah. Thanks for having me. It was great. Well, that's it. That's the first episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed that, I highly encourage you to watch the full interview. The link is in the description. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more of these types of videos, hit subscribe. Leave a comment if you'd like to get in contact with me or send me an email at cody at cocovidvid.com. I'd like to thank Kyle again for joining me. See you next time.